excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, everybody, getting ready to kick off a little working section here on um, <clears throat> the subject of three, uh, 360 HDRI creation. All this stuff is shot on the Insta360 1R. So without further ado, we will get into that in Photoshop. So I have a convention that I use when I capture um, these uh, HDRI images with the camera. I put them into a particular folder based on the location. So this location was shot about two days ago. And it's at the top of Mara Mountain in Baden, North Carolina. They just created a new observation deck and uh, about halfway through converting these into HDRI. So if you're interested in doing that sort of thing in Photoshop, you can watch for the technique. I'm going to have music in my headset, so I won't be talking so much. But um, hopefully you'll still be able to uh, kind of follow along and see what's going on. through how you do this the first time here. So you open up your files and then you go to File Automate and Merge to HDR Pro. Then once you're in HDR Pro you can tone it here in uh, ACR but I don't usually do that. I just click that because there's no OK option there and then I cancel it when it comes up and just go with what the camera did because it's so good. So just a uh, see kind of what we do. Yeah, it's just a little too bright there. All right, so once we have this up, there's a few things we want to do. Obviously, we got to get rid of the tripod, and lots of times you'll see me if there's not a tree for me to hide behind, which it looks like here I'm actually hiding behind this, <laughs> which I might have to pull myself out if I'm not careful sometimes. So we just highlight the areas of stuff that we want to remove, being careful not to get any shadows. And just kind of knowing how to, we're going to go edit, Content aware feel, uh, just knowing how to how to uh, position yourself, and so we get that little effect, which is imperfect. You know, you can't just leave that. You have to kind of like do a little hand cloning with a, with an eye toward not getting on the seams. So you'll see here, just a little bit of custom work with the old clone tool. You can eliminate the blurry parts, and you know sometimes black grass will blur, but lots of things like pavement. It's an almost perfect result just from a content aware field. I used to have to do all this by hand with uh, previous versions of Photoshop, so that's a great addition. 
And by the way, this is going to be like down around the character's feet anyway. It's not an eye area that your eye is naturally drawn to, but it is good to get rid of this blurring if you can. We certainly can. The main thing about cloning is to just take lots of diverse samples. Don't just sample one time and then just run around because then you can kind of see an obvious clone pattern. And that's just what you don't want. Okay. All right. So once we got that, we want to establish, create a new layer. We want to establish the um, where the sun is. And just to get a little bit more of a shadow, you want to make a perfect circle the center of where your sun's at and you want to hit D and switch it here to get uh, to get your color palette. Now you have to be in 32-bit uh, mode. If you're not in 32-bit mode you've already done something wrong. So you want to kind of get into the pluses here, plus one, plus two. Uh, I wouldn't go above plus three. I usually go more around plus two. This is just a super pure bright white and basically you are, do a fill, which I'm gonna use Alt Backspace to fill that in because I know that's how that works. But you could do um, Edit Fill just as well. Yep, and it's gonna fill that. Okay, well, it's already, already filled. Yep, so let's make sure we got a fill there. We do. Okay, so Control D. Now we're just gonna, let's just deselect. We're gonna highlight this layer, press Control E, which is just Merge Layers. So now we're ready to save this HDR. <clears throat> I have a convention that I use for setting up these products, so I'm always saving this to the same place. But it will offer to save it as a PSD first. You have to change that to Radiance. Then you simply navigate to where you're going to save the content, uh, your, your Radiance file, which is an HDRI. In my case, it's always uh, in my development folder for HDRIs. And the path remains the same every time. And um, I'm going to call this uh, Mountain Top Field. That will also be the name of my product. Okay, so that's saved there. Let me just, uh, I'll leave this up, but I'll go ahead and close the source images just to free up memory. Now we're going to switch over to. Go ahead and get some of this preset for you. Um, switch over to Das Studio. Okay, so in Das Studio, what I've done is I've kind of went to my dev folder where I have my render presets, and I've set up one of the um, HDRs I've already processed from this location and time. So my settings are kind of already set up um, here uh, I'm just gonna change the map so these settings are kinda like what I have uh, you know, dawn rotation doesn't really matter considering it doesn't matter which way you're pointing and you sort of customize that whatever you think is a strong presentation for the uh, the first one thing that is critical is to have a one by one aspect ratio for saving out your preset um, so what I'm gonna do is just with that selected I'm gonna go into environment environment map I'm just going to point it to the new HDR, which is mountaintop field. Once that's there, I'm going to pick an angle that I really like. Again, it doesn't really matter your rotation. Uh, I'm actually rotating the camera here. You could, I could just as well go dome rotation to get the same effect. But because you're saving your camera with it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm hiding behind here, but I don't think that's apparent. So no work required there. So this is getting pretty scenic right here. Yeah, so there's a picnic table. I like that tree. Now I could save a camera with this, but it doesn't really doesn't really matter. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. But if I if I wanted to have a light going on or a particular angle, I would also save the camera. So anyway, I'm okay with this. I'm going to do the folder here, the presets, and I as I as I create these and submit them, I typically will go in here and pull them into the submitted folder so that I know I've already submitted those and I don't need to do those promo renders again. Um, yeah, so uh, 
All right, so back here, just refresh so I'll have less stuff to look at. Then I'll just press plus here, uh, save the render preset, paste in the name I want to save it as. Don't want general render. If I wanted to save the camera, I would keep general render. But I don't want to save the camera. I just want to save the render preset, which uses the iRig HDRI backdrop for lighting. And uh, once that's done, I'm just going to make my uh, render my thumbnails here. Sometimes on these, I feel like I'm faster than Daz Studio. Meaning to say that I wind up waiting for Daz Studio to catch up on making poses and things of that nature. Okay, so. Recently, I, I mentioned I'm no longer making DUFs because Daz prefers it just to be the name of the preset and not DUF. So I'm going to go in here and first I'm going to do that. It's irrelevant at, uh, ooh, I see a mistake. It should be 91 by 91. Now I'll do it. A little bit right what I just did. Uh, then .tip. For the tip file, I'm going to make it 256. There we go. Hit that. And just a real quick refresh just to make sure that's working the way I anticipate. It is. Okay. So now I've already kind of created a preset for making my promos for these where I just use a uh, sphere with um, the right stuff. So just to shed a little light here, I've got this little robot figure that I like, but I've recently just had been having issues with uh, Connect, and I'll, I'll you know make a Connect uh, purchase or whatever, and it just takes forever to um, come up with the content in my Connect folder. So I've created a library called Connect Can't Wait. In other words, I'm not going to wait two days to get my content to show up before I use it. Make a purchase, you're ready to use it. So. Um, I like to uh, go ahead and do that. So, da, da, da. Wait, wait, wait. so this this first image is kind of like the image that represents the product. So I really want to make sure that I get get it in the best light as possible. Um, try to find that exciting angle. Okay. It's not bad. It's a little more bucolic right there. So just grab this guy. I love this little robot. It, you know, I have a sphere as well I'll use sometimes just to, so you can see the, the reflection all around. But I have this theory that characters are just a little more endearing to people and they, they tend to like them. So I'm going to make a, a little update on this guy's textures and see if I can get away with it. Let's go with body. I want him to be ultra shiny. Um, I'm going to save this real quick just in case I screw this up. Oh, no. Here we go. 
Let me go with some crazy metal shaders. All a part of the process, you know, making your promos look as good as they can. Uh, that's not bad. I gotta find what I really love though before I apply this to everything. No, uh, still not exactly what I was looking for. Shaker sets. Uh, Four D. Um, I have no location the content of the default Irish shaders. And they have some good looking metals in there, so this is about as shiny a metal as you could possibly get. Okay, so this serves the same purpose as uh, having a shiny sphere. Just don't want the uh, eyes or a little heart to change. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty cool right there. Um, so, once I kind of have this in a way that I like it, seeing all of the great uh, reflections. Change the camera for a second. Get the head just really the way I want it. There we go. You can't see the clipping from the angle I'm going to go with. Okay, so this will show a good example. So yeah, then we want to uh, navigate to our promo folder. This is kind of a little insight into how I have my folder set up. So this product is going to be in Rusty. It's going to be called Mountain. Actually, I think I still have the name in there. Don't I? Yep, Mountain Top Field. And go in there. And I'll render off the promos that are going to be um, my various renderosity marketing promos. Uh, fill in all the required uh, renders. So that's usually a minimum of three images. And in my case, I'll do four sometimes. Uh, just here's like a big upside for having the um, HDRs in the first place is just how fast this renders. Even leaving this preview render up, watch this. Like I said, that's using some of my memory right there. As I do this, I'm going to have a little oatmeal, so I'm going to mute my microphone.
still not done with my oatmeal, but I wanted to pop in and illustrate a quick little time saver. So I want to resize, I, I render all these images at like 4K, and I want to resize them to use in my promos to, to get like a more resolute appearance uh, of the images, which these look pretty good even at 4K, but squashing them down, they're going to look even better. So I've created an action that, as you can see, just resizes, selects the whole image, resizes it, and copies it, and closes it without saving the source image over itself. So I just hit that little button, and I go here, and in my layers palette, make sure I'm in the right spot, delete these others. This is a repurposed PSD from the previous product, which I will save, you know, unique to this one. Just paste that in, and then I have a little bit of play to... Um, to, re to move the image or resize it, or if, if I happen, this cloning looks pretty good here, but if it didn't and I wanted to hide that or whatever, I could, I could do it. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. So this is going to become our main promo image. So we'll just save this. And in each of these, um, I will create a little folder called Upload. So I know that, that is my, uh, my edited promos that are ready to be uploaded when I get ready to submit this product. I'd like to cover that for you, but unfortunately that's against the TOS at uh, Renderosity to share that sort of thing. Also want to do the same thing here for my uh, thumbnail. You always want to submit thumbnails, even though they're not required, you know, the system will do it for you if you don't submit a specific one. You can certainly make it look better if you do submit one, so I always recommend that you do that at Renderosity. Now at DAZ, you do have to you do have to submit a thumbnail, so it's not an option to not. So I'll save that PSD. We can close that when we're done with it. Now I'll simply go through and grab all of my lightbox images, hit them with this with this uh, promo action. Make sure I'm in the right spot, layer-wise. Paste it, and then just save it out as a lightbox. And actually, I can go ahead and turn that off. We've already got that point across, so just leave the logo there. And this is kind of how I will do. This is actually a really good look. One. I'm actually really chuffed about how this looks. And I'll save these as lightbox one through three. Okay. And you see how quick this can go if you have it templatized and formatted uh, to your advantage. La, 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 la. I like this little guy. I mean, the whole point of products in the first place, right, is to make the process of creating their art a little easier. Um, Hmm. If I were speaking Japanese, I would call that orangey juice. Okay, cool. Breakfast is out of the way. So this is just a plain one. You know, if I want to... Uh... There we go. Make it look maximum resolution, just scale it as perfectly as I can. Nothing wrong with that promo. And then I just do at least one with the sphere. Another thing about the sphere is that's sort of like the universal message for this is an HDR product. You don't want to make it too confusing by having like compositions and everyone they might think you're selling the robot or you know a character if you have that character in your all your promos. Okay. All right, cool. So the uh, that product is ready to submit. Other than packaging it and setting up the readme, that product is ready to submit. So we will move on to the next one. 
I know I have at least one more to create from that batch. So yeah, in this way I can go out and spend an hour and shoot like two months, two or three months worth of content as far as HDRs go. I don't always build them out. Although like I, in this case, I am two weeks ahead right now and I, I have been up to two months ahead. So it's a, uh, it's a cool thing. I'm going to get into my release schedule a little bit later in a different video. So this looks like a different one. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's different. Okay, here we go. Automate. Merge to HDRI Pro. Add open files. Okay. Do not check remove ghosts because if you're working from a tripod, this will create make it a little grainier than you want it to be. We see I've left myself in the shot here, but that's an easy fix. Tone AR ACR. Cancel. You fat dude. What are you doing? Now I could do this with smart uh, cloning, I think, but I'm not going to. In this case, I'm going to try to get it a little bit more perfect. So I'm going to do all that by hand. I'm going to invert that selection so I can get this edge right here without getting out into the green. Just get that little bit of maroon from the shirt. Okay, I'd say that's darn nigh impossible to see any longer. So we're going to go back and do our normal, um, you know, and just to show you that you don't have to use the content aware field, you can pretty easily use uh, custom cloning. Again, the important part is that you, well, first off, you got to have the right settings so that you're not, uh, you're not putting like a blurred version of the clone stamp. In other words, you want to make sure you're, but one place it really does help is making the seams a little more um, accurate. So now from there, I'm going to go this see right there at the edge you can definitely see where I've used the clone tool and you don't want that constant aware feel see how she does okay that's pretty darn good that's really really good actually see how much better that is at the edge here, I still don't want to see these cloned limbs. Okay, wow. I mean, that's that's hard to it's hard to argue with right there. Oh, it's because I haven't merged my layers. Here we 
Okay, what's going on? That's pretty wicked. I'm gonna roll with that. It's a little bit right there that's kind of obvious. Wake that up just a bit. Like flat, uh, featureless dirt is just nearly perfect when you use content aware feel. Okay, so ready to say this. So we're going to call this mountain top path. Save as uh, radius files. The first thing we do, go over to our uh, HDRI dev. HDRI dev. Textures Mountain Top Path. Wait a minute. Do I have one called Mountain Top Path? No, I call that Observation Path. There we go. All right. Okay, so we can go here to do this. Delete that. Um, oh, I see one thing we didn't do. So we can see our sun here, so we should probably go ahead and add a, um, a hot sun effect. Boom. Now I think if you haven't changed this, it will remain what you said it, it did. That's true. So I'm just doing a fill there. I'm going to merge that down. I'm going to overwrite that uh, radiance file I just created. Okay, there we go. Okay, switching over to Daz real quick. We've already got our uh, presets in there, so really all I have to do is change uh, the environment to mountaintop path. Get a look at how she's looking here. Yeah, that's actually a good first uh, image right there, but let's go ahead and say about our um, render presets. HDRI Dave, where are you? Man, the woes of having so many libraries. It really slows you down finding stuff. Okay, render preset. Render settings preset. There we go. Uh, mountain top. Render options. Did not get rid of my DUF. That's the problem. Okay, cool. Uh, so now make a folder for my promos.
Hmm. Sometimes you want to get uh, a little more creative with your um, promos. Just having inspiration hit me here. For the Yeti. The usage of the Yeti. Let's see here. Where are you, Mr. Yeti? Huh. That's, that's just the hair? Okay, it's just, I guess just the hair. So where's the Yeti himself? Huh. Yeti. There we go. Just checking in on the stream here. just did a prose pack which is not yet released but is certainly um, pending release at Rendrosity called Freak Out for Genesis 8 male that would be appropriate. Genesis 8 male freak out. Here we go. There's one prose in particular I'm thinking would look great. There's a Yeti in your yurt. Since I'm not going for the snow beast, I want to change these materials. To reflect kind of a woodland version. I'm guessing that's what we have to do right there, but let's make sure. Why are you sitting off the ground? Big pads on the feet, I guess. Now, some folks might consider this cheating. I don't always do it, but in this case, it's going to really add something to have a little bit of this uh, grass blended in here. Of course, I won't do it on all of the promos, so I think it's okay once in a while to help yourself out here. So that grass needs to be a bit greener. I'm going to go with a diffuse overlay weight and a real green. Let's see here. So I can see it's too green now. I want more yellow. I'm trying to match this right here. That's getting decent right there. Just play with the overlay way a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's that's looking really freaking good, yo. Okay, let's change his head position. This is, this is the fun part right here, like throwing a little bit of art in your art. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, now, also, I think I have some cool expressions on that pack that freak out pack let's see I'm pretty sure I do freak out oh freak out hey here we go I like this one okay let's 
see how we're looking. Yes, this is this is getting there for me. Okay. This one might take a little longer to render because it is um has all that hair in it. Let's go ahead and hit that for a second. While that's rendering, I think I can stand to switch back to Photoshop, so I'm going to try that now and move on to the next one. I think I have one more without doing any number twos. Like I have a couple of the deck with different lighting, but um, let's see what we have here. Okay, so that's what we did. No, nope, that's not what we just did. That one. Let's look at what this is. Oh yeah, I do have some more. This is cool. Uh, there's actually one I like a little better. I think this is it right here. Yeah. This may run a little slower since I'm doing that render in the background. Automate Motor Stick Share Pro. Add open files. Okay.
I think I can take a smaller bite here and get a better result. That's what I'm going to try to do. Actually, you know what? Let's do some hand cloning first. Yeah, this was a bigger challenge for the program because there's so many different little things here going on. I'm just really curious how that Yeti looks, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that, uh, pull that back up. So we, we've got this one made now, so I can just close these. And we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to go to
Hey, that's pretty good right there. I like the look of that. I'm not going to use that figure in all of these because I just I don't want to like again. Uh, just turn that off. Turn that off. Oh, I might have to. Okay, cool. I'm glad I can do that. All right, so we got that. Now we can just make a couple of different angles here. Get to show the sphere. The sphere is always a perfect indication that you're selling an HDRI. Box of one render. This should be a quick one.
Okay, folks, the work continues, but now I have to move into the uh, creating readmes and setting up these products on the renderosity um, vendor interface, and I'm not allowed to show that. So I hope that you guys are taking something away from this, and uh, we will catch up with you all sooner than later. Take care, and again, thanks for your support on uh, Graybro on dash3d.com and Disciple3d on renderosity.com. Check it out.